Uh, last thing I want to play from Brent, though, is highly, highly interesting to me, just based off of Brent's brand Dispense supplements and what I and knew of his brand. And apparently, I thought of it completely wrong. So check this out. I was going to try to get through the interview without using the word toxic. <laughs> oh, no, I hate that word. Do you hate it? I hate that word. I got annoyed when we were doing the like the little packet of you and the word toxic kept coming up so much. I can't imagine in your life. Bruh. But you lean into it a little bit, no? Not intentionally. I could do, mm. but it, it gets to a certain point where once it's, it's attached to you, you could do anything and that's what people go on. It's yeah. like a Zodiac. All right, cool. He goes on to say basically like, oh, yeah, you sit like a... Virgo or a Gemini, like how people can just say anything you do also applies to this label, this attachment. Mm -hmm. But what I found was interesting <clears throat> was obviously if you think about Brent Fias's brand, it's toxic R and B. That's a major label on his brand. Now, of course, there's other segments of it. I wasn't aware that there was never a point that he pushed that or owned that himself. Yeah, that was fan push, bro. I didn't realize that was a fan yeah. push. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what I want to talk about. I mean, it's his life. You know what I'm saying? So he, you know, he be talking about some toxic shit in the music, bro. You know I mean? <laughs> he's 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 king of yeah, probably king of toxic oh, army. He's looked at his king 100. Yeah. yeah, bro. Like so, I think it's it's just it's interesting to see once again like where the fans will take it because it makes me also think about um like the future toxic narrative. But that's another like fans started making those future memes. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And like and, and putting that out there. That wasn't something he was actively doing. Same with Brent Fires, bro. I've seen lots of toxic Brent Fires memes. You know what I'm saying? It's like once again, like fans feel like, hey, this song that you made fits a toxic situation I'm going through. So to me, you are the toxic savior. You know what I'm saying? Like, like <laughs> you are making the soundtrack to to that brick going through my window at 3 a.m. You know what I'm saying? So it's like maybe that's not what you want, but that is what I as the fan see for you. That, that's what that's what it feels like. That's crazy because in in this situation, I would say it worked out positively for yeah, him. Yeah, right. And he can find that to be annoying, but that's why he ain't trying to stop it. He ain't never came out to try to stop it. He's not making romantic love songs. Well, you know, like super super romantic, non toxic stuff that's to, funny. to kill about it. That you know, in his interview too. <laughs> you know, like like when he's gonna make love. But like you said, he's kind of just talking about his life and where he is. Yeah, in the moment. Yeah. But man, imagine if the fans fans, not even haters create a narrative that is detrimental to you because fans can do that unknowingly because it's just like short-sighted and it might be something you know that grows and goes way beyond what it actually is in a negative way yeah yeah how do you manage that in your opinion you can't <laughs> i don't feel like you can but you just gotta hope and pray <sighs> that your fans are coming up with the memes and the jokes and the narratives that benefit you because you brought up a good point. Sometimes it's accidental, bro. Sometimes a fan is just making a joke. Yeah. And it spreads out. And now some outlet picks it up and it's looked like looked at as a serious thing. Do you remember a couple of years ago when um they they're technically a Travis Scott fan, but I want to say they were content credit, but they put out this video of, you know, like fake uh Travis Scott like cheating on Kylie Jenner. Oh yeah. And, and that whole thing just spread, bro. And it came out, the person's like, Oh, this is just a joke. You know what I'm saying? I just put this together. Like, bro, fans are wild, bro. Fans are willing to go to the extreme with some shit because it doesn't affect them, bro. If this shit blows the fuck up, like, I got a cool clout moment out of it, and you the one got to deal with the backlash. Yeah. It's just sometimes they use that power for good. Sometimes they use it for evil, bro. So that's why I say I don't think there's anything you can do. You, you just have to hope that you're engaging and cultivating a group of people that like, fuck with you, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and uh, trying to at least not, like, put a, a negative narrative out there about you. But again, even if they're try not trying to, they can. And I think that's what makes it so difficult today because it goes back to DJ Academics and Joe Budden talking about today's fan back, what was it, probably like 2017 now or whatever, on Everyday Struggle. I remember mm -hmm. they were like, you know, Joseph Budden will be like, no, that is not a fan. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah. And academics are like, no, yeah, that's what fans do. They'll show up to your house and and do some crazy shit. Hey, get like, window or some shit. Like, no, man, that ain't a fan. Yeah. For me, my, the way I'm set up and built, no, nah, that ain't a fan. For yeah. me, yeah. Like, you're not gonna get like, oh, I get it. You just like, I'm not gonna be thinking of you in a positive way if you make up some bullshit. Like, I cheated, right? Yeah. I get that you got your clout moment from me. I might not even feel because I might say, oh yeah, you're immature and you're a certain place in life. 
and whatever that age, like if he's that kind of age, you know, if it's a grown, grown man, hell no, for sure. But I might give you some grace and be like, I get, but I don't, I'm not gonna fuck with you still. Mm-hmm. Personally, we ain't taking no mm-hmm. pics. You're not coming up on stage, you know. I'm not about to support the moment. But if you go against those moments, you know, you feed them as well, the way the internet works. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's like, the problem. It's such a, a delicate dance, right? Do I ignore it? Do I lean into it? Because sometimes there's a power in, lean, in like laughing at it or leaning into it and just taking it away, right? And so it's such a situational thing. That's why I, I don't think there's a 100%, you know, way to, to ever just control it. I think it's something you more so have to just monitor and then have – the I, I don't know either just the 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 good gut feeling to know when to take a, a risk <laughs> and you know like I said either ignore lean in or, or capitalize off of um but just hope your fans just are not off of your blood but it's crazy because I've seen other artist fans do it like when artists beef you know what I'm saying like there's a there's a really uh popular like Twitter page I follow that a Nikki fan page that like hates uh like Lotto bro like the rapper Lotto and like I've just seen them post like crazy shit you know what I'm saying. And you'll see fans in the comment just like, wow, nah, bro, saying, I heard this, I heard this, I heard this. And one, you just thinking, like, where'd you hear that from? Like, who put that, that information out there, right? But I don't put it past the fans to create narratives. Because like I said, for a lot of them, I feel like this should – artists' lives to them are like a game, like a, a real-life video game sometimes, mm-hmm. I think, right? It's like we were talking about earlier with the fan and uh, fans wanting to have a decision. This is a thing where, like, I can, I can have this idea – around you or of you and i can see it have a real world impact on you right like a game bro. like you know what i'm saying like this person that is typically not obtainable or touchable to me i can see this thing that i do or help push like have a real world impact on you let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up i have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, We're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. And I think fans like that shit, bro. Like it's 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 interesting from that from there. Think about it from their vanity point, bro. It's interesting, bro. Like I threw the I threw the pebble at the giant and I saw him flinch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, (laughs) And it's like, oh shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that that got to you, right? So that's why I go back to it. I think it's about like what type of people are you cultivating that pay attention to you because certain um you know some fan bases breed toxicity and you can tell like the the fan base is just like crazy bros it's it's ugly over there and then you see some fan bases where like their fans would never do anything crazy to their favorite artists right they would never like you said harass them somewhere or or show up to their house or do certain things so you know with people being people some of it you naturally can only control so much but I, i do think it comes down to what type of people are you as an artist attracting? What type of base are you cultivating? You and definitely then, curate that yourself. Yeah, yeah. So you, so you try to curate as positive an experience as you can. And then, you know, beyond that, man, you know, I <laughs> just got to hope for the best. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see that. I can see that, man. I think the the really interesting thing you said was throwing a pebble at a giant and making him flinch. Yeah. Right? And then at that moment, that dynamic changes because you go from superhero to somehow to realistic, realistic yeah. you're in my space. And now psychologically, I'm no longer even thinking about my fandom. I'm only thinking about how can I make you flinch again? How can I interact with you again? It's crazy, so bro. Everything goes out the window. So yeah, no, that's 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 real crazy. Hey, bro, fans real can really crazy. be sadistic, bro. When you think about that shit, oh, that shit, yeah. that should be crazy. Hell yeah. Well, look, man, I want to end this thing out with some fun. Two little quick subjects. You know what I mean? This one. <laughs> well, let's talk about this Maybe one. inside a joke. Oh, that we go. Replay <laughs> this real quick. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, come on, play. Oh, you got to hit that. Oh, yeah. Understand? I maybe say inside joke. 
Mm-hmm. We had like 200 people say, <laughs> ask him about his real voice. I'm like, what does that mean? Is that an inside joke? Nah, it's real. What they think your voice isn't real? I, have, I, I really talk. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> fuck out of here. That's not how you really talk. That is my real voice. I just talk like this when I'm trying to like make music and make content and shit. But I really talk like this in real life. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Fuck out of here. You can ask anybody. That's how I really talk. This man is funny. You talk like my family, like I'm around my family and shit. That's that's what I got. That's what I think, man. I'm like, ah, it hit too hard, man. It really got me. I didn't think it was gonna go (laughs) there at all. I don't know where I thought it was gonna go when he said the real voice, (laughs) but I am not so deep into the DDGG world. If I know if it's like an inside joke and something he's done before, oh yeah, man, he trolling, bro. But I'm like, this has to be a troll. But it was done so smoothly. Yeah. Right, <laughs> and it was done on somebody else's platform that creates the extra organic nature that it was done and set up like that. It really made me like say, well, I don't know, I don't know. Let me just put it on the pod. Maybe people in the comments will be able to, to yeah. let us know. No, nah, bro, DDG's a genius and shit like that, bro. I, I agree. I've 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 vouched for DDG for a minute, bro. Like as content creator turned artist, or he's probably the best content creator turned artist. 